Hey guys, thanks for watching another Jaguars United film breakdown. I'm super pumped because today we are breaking down Jaguars third round draft pick running back Tank Bigsby. A lot to like about his film. Uh, you're going to really like it. So uh, before we jump into that, though, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Make sure you hit that notification bell so that you get notifications when we do live shows and when other film breakdowns get released. And also, while you're here, follow the Twitter, follow the Instagram. That's how I communicate with all the Jags fans, and we can talk about Jags 24-7. Without further ado, let's jump right into it. Before we jump into the film, a couple of things about Tank Bigsby. He measured in at six foot two ten. I love it. A six foot tall running back. Uh, he's got size, strength, and speed. Ran a four five six forty at the combine. Did twenty one reps on the bench. Nice big strong guy. Uh, he played three seasons at Auburn. He combined for a total of five hundred and forty attempts. 2,900 yards, a 5.4 yards per carry, and had 25 touchdowns. He also had 62 receptions for 448 yards. He was SEC Freshman of the Year. Uh, he was Auburn football for the last three years. The team went as Tank Bigsby went. And you can ask any Auburn fan, if he got it going, there was a good chance that Auburn would win. And even when, you'll see in the film, when, when Auburn got behind and they were down in the second half, they still stayed with the run because Bigsby was that much of a influence on the game. He played 35 games at Auburn. 27 of those games were against Power 5 schools. And most of those coming against the SEC. He was a five-star recruit coming out of high school. Some things I like about his game is that he's an upright runner and can run downhill with one cut, but he also has really good acceleration. Um, he's been called creative with finding run lanes, which is something that you always want in a running back. Very quick. You cannot arm tackle this guy. Um, he's really good at bouncing the ball outside when the inside's blocked up. So Auburn would call a lot of inside zone, and he Bigsby would be able to run it outside and, and get to the outside. He runs well in tight spaces, um, and he will run you over. So you kind of have to pick between, like, do I want to uh, get ready to get run over, or do I want to try to tackle this guy so he can't jump cut me? Uh, really good, tough, north-south runner. Uh, he processes gap integrity quickly, something I really, really love in running backs. Um, and he's improved in pass pro through the last three years. There's a knock on him as a freshman. Uh, really improved on it over the three years. He kind of gives me Kenneth Walker vibes as a running back. Um, so there's a lot to like about his film, and I think that you're going to see through the way that Auburn used him is similar to the way that Jags may be able to use him. So let's look at the film and, and see. All right, so we're going to start this film breakdown a little differently. We're going to show an entire series where Auburn leaned entirely on Tank Bigsby. Like I said in the intro, the team went as Tank Bigsby went. This is an important part of the game. This was last year, Penn State versus Auburn. Penn State is up 11. We're in midway through the third quarter. Auburn can't really get anything going. They've only scored 10 points. And they really haven't used Bigsby a lot in the game. And then here you're going to see them rely entirely on Bigsby. So we're going to pick it up here right as the play starting. And you're going to see this theme happen a lot with Bigsby. The play is designed to hit on the inside zone. He's going to read that the blocking either isn't sufficient or the defense crashes too aggressively. And he's going to kick it outside to the edge for a decent game. Now here he's going to read that the strong safety comes down a little bit too far, gets caught up in the wash. And so you're going to see him make a play really out of nothing, essentially. And again, you're going to see him do this a lot. Uh, nothing there and picking up a few yards. Not a ton of yards there, but you'll see it happen time and time again. Inside zone here. Keeps turning his legs. Gets a couple out of nothing. Uh, next play. You're going to get a little creative here with a little orbit motion. They're going to do another. They probably could have handed it off on the read option and gotten more yards with Bigsby, but Bonix got a little selfish there. All right, here we're going to see another inside zone. That's how it's drawn up to hit. Uh I like this play a lot. I mean, he makes really something out of nothing. I mean, that's not. there's not a lot here. I mean, there's not a lot here. And he's able to take the right angle, run aggressively through the lane, and get there. Next play, straight up the middle, inside, power back. Yes, sir. Pick up the first down. Next play, designed to hit inside. He's going to kick it outside, run over the safety there. 
We're going to see a reverse angle here. I mean, this is what he does. Again, designed to hit up the middle. Going to kick it outside. A little half stiff arm, a little truck stick. Uh, keep it going. Um, I like this angle here. Yep. Got to get a little lower than that nine. Got to get a little bit lower than that. Uh, they're going to take Bigsby out for one play after this. So this is Hunter. He's going to pick up a couple yards here. Um, but then right after this play, we're going to see Bigsby back in the game. Inside zone. Finds the lane. Keeps his leg. I mean, look at this. Just falls forward every single play. Next play. Inside zone. Again, kicks it outside. Nothing to the inside. Kicks it outside. Pretty big gain there. Another situation where he's able to find the outside zone. A little toss this time. It's going to get up in the end zone and touchdown. I mean, there it is. I mean, that's what you get with Tank Bigsby is you can lean on him for your offense. I mean, this was just something that we saw time and time again when you watch the film with Auburn is the team, when they would give Bigsby the ball, good things would happen. When they took him out and they would spell him out with another back, they couldn't seem to get anything going. Now, Auburn didn't have the most uh, explosive offense outside of Bigsby. So this was kind of like a microcosm of what Auburn football looked like for the last two years. If you fed Bigsby the ball, good things would happen. Another one just showing his toughness. I mean, you can't arm tackle the guy. I mean, he, at six foot 210, you have to gang tackle him you have to wrap him up around the legs he really just churns his feet he's always falling forward here we're going to see out a gun like auburn was at most of the time they're just going to run a simple inside zone designed to hit between the b and the c gap here but take a look here the nose tackle for south carolina does a good job of shedding the block on the center and getting to the gap where he needed to be i mean he actually does a good job here um so you're going to take a look whips the center Gets him there. And so now, I mean, this is dead to rights. This is a nose tackle, boys. A nose tackle on Tank Bigsby. Like, in all other situations, I would probably bet the nose tackle is going to make the tackle here. Bigsby th runs through it. Pushes off another would-be tackler. Getting dragged. And then turns a gain that should have been really a gain of zero into a gain of 12. Or a gain of two. And a gain. I mean, that's, that's what he does time and time again. Just a physical, aggressive runner. I mean, he is going to be a great compliment to Travis Etienne. I mean, just guy does not go down easily. Um, like I talked about in the intro, man, if you're someone that benches plus 300 pounds, I mean, you're probably squatting and deadlifting plus 500. And so when you're, when you're doing that type of thing in the weight room, it makes this type of running happen impossible. So uh, looking forward to Tank Bigsby running through some people this year. All right, I like this play because it kind of shows you his creativity in finding running lanes on the outside, but it also shows you his quick area speed and burst and quickness here. See, Auburn's going to be lined up in a funky little formation where they have uh, two on the line of scrimmage here, an offset tight end. Behind the line of scrimmage, you have Tank Bigsby actually lined up in an offset position out here to the left. And then you have their uh, second string running back, Hunter, back here. So I like this because this could be how the Jags could utilize it with two running backs with Etienne and Bigsby on the field at the same time. And you're going to see they're going to run a little misdirection toss. They're going to end up tossing it this way. But they're going to flow this way to try to get Texas A&M to flow the wrong direction. Classic misdirection. So you're going to see the toss here to Bigsby. And here you can see 17 does a pretty good job. We back up a bit here. Uh, 17 does a pretty good job of getting to the outside to attempt to turn Bigsby back inside, right? Not necessarily his job, but he's a smart football player, high football IQ, and he wants to bring Bigsby back into the line of scrimmage uh, toward the flow of the play. And Bigsby puts his foot in the dirt, one cut, gets upfield, gets to the sidelines. And again, he's not going to run away from anybody there, but just the ability to pick up like a cool 30 yards on this play when it really should have gone for like one or zero. Uh, it's kind of what makes him special, right? Here is the acceleration. Gets there. Uh, big gain there. Again, I like it. See, they have Auburn as both their running backs on the field at the same time. Um, a little misdirection trickery I could see Doug Peterson doing in this situation. So I like the play, and I like the kind of the way that it worked out, and I like how you can see Bigsby's skill set here um, on the tape. Another play of Tank Bigsby's versatility. Again, uh, a play where... 
you, we could see the Jags use him in the similar type situation. So they have another back right here in the backfield lined up in single back behind the quarterback. Then they have Tank Bigsby lined up here as a little wing back over here to the far left. Tied in here, tied in here, and another wing. I mean, this is some wing T football. This is some old school wing T football right here. I love it. You guys know me. I love this type of stuff. So what they're going to do is they're just going to run your classic little sweep here. And they're going to run a sweep and get the blocks out in front of them. And he's going to get to the edge and make a play. Gets there. Versatility. Really good at finding lanes. I mean, he's really, really good at finding gap integrity. I mean, he can just see where the lane's at. He can get his foot in the dirt, and he can hit it. Gets up the field, uh, contact at the 50, gets tackled at the 43. I mean, he picks up eight extra yards after initial contact here. Uh, another thing that he can do well. So uh, versatility, I love it. I want to see him do this with Travis Etienne. Put them both on the field, man. I mean, make it a two-headed monster, and let's just give this offense just one more piece the defense has to worry about. This play against Mississippi State, I like because it kind of shows you his home run ability. Now, He's a home run threat. He had several big plays. I mean, looking at his average over the course of the season, you can tell the guy is, is, is a home run threat. I mean, average in 5.4 yards per carry in the hardest division in football. Uh, it's pretty impressive because he could rip off big gains like this one. So here you're going to see him. This is late in the game. I mean, there's five minutes left in the game. Auburn is down five to Mississippi State. And... Mississippi State's expecting the run. They got their big package in. They got three down linemen, their odd man front. Then they had their two linebackers and the seven nine techniques and their two linebackers here. So, I mean, they are they got their big boys in. I mean, they're expecting the run. Uh, this isn't a situation where they catch him sleeping. It's just blocked up well. You're going to see Tank Bigsby get it. Um, it's just going to be a nice little zone run to the left. Blocked up pretty well, gets in there, and he's able to like he's he's faster than he looks is the thing because when you're six foot two ten as a running back, you kind of get the label as like just a downhill runner, a one cut back, which he is. But to be able to accelerate on the sideline, showing that track speed there, if you can score from the forty one yard line at any given time, if it's blocked up decently, that's somebody you want, right? Like I said in the intro, in a different era, this guy would have been a first round pick. You know, he has all the tools to make a starting running back in the NFL. And he comes in NFL ready with his size and speed. So, um, home run threat. I love it. All right, here we're going to see his home run threat. Once again, we're going to see Ole Miss is up by 11 points in the second half. And here you see Auburn not getting away from the run, knowing how important it is. You're going to see Bigsby's going to make one guy miss at the line of scrimmage. And that's all it takes. Heavy blocking formation. Again, the play was designed to hit to the left. Like looked like the B gap or the C gap, possibly the A gap to the left. But look where he ends up finding the gap. I'm looking at next. We're talking about the creativity here. I mean, Auburn had a really heavy stack here at the line of screen. They had it really heavy over here. So I mean, that's where they wanted the ball to go. And he probably could have bounced it out here if he wanted to. But he saw the potential to come this way. And obviously it was the right move because he scores a touchdown. Gets in there through the B gap, puts his foot in the dirt, accelerates. 20 can't make the tackle, and then runs away from 23 and 7. I mean, again, you want a guy that can home run, score you a touchdown. Take pressure off of Trevor, take pressure off of some of these other guys on the team. And when you can score from the 50 yard line, I mean, that's what that does. And we see now two plays in a row give this guy the ball. And he's a home run threat at any given time. So pumped, can't wait, going to be a good year. All right, last home run ball. All right, <laughs> this one from the 36-yard line against Western Kentucky. Again, Western Kentucky is stacking the line of scrimmage here. I mean, Auburn's got two tight ends here and a fullback, so no secret what they want to do. They hit it inside a lot. They go to the field a lot. And what are they going to do here? They're going to do a weak toss to the boundary. All right, uh, they're going to pull 77, the tackle here. Uh, good blocking, just needs one gap, puts his foot in the dirt, up the sideline, goodbye. I mean, again, it's three plays now where you he, the one cut runner just needs one cut and gets up the field. Here you see from the reverse angle, good kick out blocks. Let's see if they diagram the whole thing for it. Okay, there you go. I mean, good blocking. Blockers out in space, finds the gap, able to get on the sideline and get up the field, track speed, touchdown.
All right, it wouldn't be a running back film breakdown complete if we didn't show at least one play of him as a receiving back. Now, in his draft profile, he gets some knocks for not being viable on third down, for not being a receiving back. And if you look at his career stats at Auburn, basically a full-time starter for three years at 62 receptions and only 448 yards. Not really what he was asked to do, more than what he could do. Now, zero receiving touchdowns, another thing that was surprising when I looked at his stat line. But again, after looking at all the film we've looked at, it's understandable to keep this guy where he's best and in his wheelhouse here. So we're going to see him here in the backfield. Uh, this is at the end of the half. So all things considered, in, in, in the spirit of honesty, uh, Penn State's probably playing some sort of prevent because look how far they're backed up. But regardless, that's really not why I wanted to show this play. I wanted to show his ability to make someone miss as a receiver, right? So basic screen extension of the run game here. The Jags do it all the time. We saw him do it against Kansas City almost ex exclusively, uh, makes, making guys miss all over the field. So uh, it's not that he can't do it. It's just that he wasn't asked to do it very often. I mean, most of the time, they brought in a different back on third down. When he was a sophomore, they had a dedicated third down back. Um, they didn't really have a lot of situations where they needed <laughs> pass plays in last year because the team was pretty bad. But he can make guys miss. Uh, he can make people miss in the open field. Very elusive. I mean, there's the speed right there running past guys. So um, don't let it be a knock on him. Um, he can do it, if you ask me. All right, and last but certainly not least, we got to look at one play of him at least picking up a blitz, right? Again, if you're going to be able to play every down in the NFL, you got to be able to protect the quarterback, you got to be able to pick up the blitz, got to be able to see it coming. Here we're going to see a pretty good blitz here by this nickel corner here by Ole Miss. He's going to kind of sneak last minute, get a good little blitz here uh, between the A and C gap here. Uh, and now they got one, two, three, four, five, six guys blitzing. And one, two, three, four, five, six. He, I think he's going to release for a route here. Um, so they're going to need extra help here to pick up the blitz. The snap here. Bigsby picks it up. Nice job. Got to be a willing blitz pickup. I mean, no need to watch. I mean, this was a, this was a, a microcosm of Auburn's entire season right here. Um, great job getting outside the pocket. Wide open player and then throws it to the Ole Miss player. So Bigsby, though, has the ability to get here. Lower his shoulder, pick up a blitzing corner, a blitzing safety, um, willing, ready to do it. I like the way he sets his feet, I like the way he gets wide here right before contact. Um, not afraid. I mean, again, this is a strong guy. This is a guy really strong. Um, he's going to be able to pick up that blitz, and he's, I mean, running his feet through the block. I mean, that's that's some good blocking right there. I don't understand the knock on him as a passing back. I mean, look at that. Good job there. Oh, I mean, overall, I'm excited, man. It's it's, it's He's going to be a perfect compliment. You know, a lot of people think it was a reach there in the third round because of having Travis Etienne on the roster, but I disagree. I think his skill set is completely different. I think it gives Etienne more flexibility to do what he does best. And it's going to give Trevor just another weapon, take some pressure off the passing game, um, home run, big game potential. Um, really excited about him being on the Jags. I mean, a great addition, and it's what the offense needed is another dimensional piece, the guy that can get to the outside, the guy who can get to the edge, and he can score on any given play. So uh, good pick. Excited to see how he does this year for the Jags. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Jaguars United film breakdown. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, be sure to thumbs up the video, leave a comment, let me know what you think he will do here in Jacksonville. Make sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel, follow the Twitter, follow the Instagram to stay up to date on all of the stuff that we're doing here at Jaguars United. I'll see you guys next time, and until then, go Jags.